when I displace to the left of the specimen, there is a very, very big, like almost big, from the heart, eh? coming from the heart, this big blood vessel is called the iota. And the iota divides into the first branch is called ciliacomesenteric artery, the first blood vessel. So this blood vessel, ciliacomesenteric, will divide again to form a celiac artery. Then this celiac artery will be the one to divide into the three. Again, the three like GIS, but this time they are arteries. Eh? Like gastric artery will go to the stomach, almost supplying both the stomach and almost the duodenum and the pancreas. Then intestino will go to the pancreas this time, not the ileum. Eh? So when it reaches the, the third, the third D, like the third blood vessel, which is formed from the celiac, is anterior mesenteric artery. And this anterior mesenteric artery divides into two. That, okay, divides into two. It will form the splenic, which is go going to the spleen. And then the posterior mesenteric artery, which is going to, the, to supply the ileum mm -hmm. and down. Then when we reach down, that's when we'll find the rectal arteries and supplying the rectum down. The main iota goes down and supplies the kidneys. Now, long things, is, things you're seeing are the kidneys. They are the, when the iota reaches the kidney, it branches into four renal arteries. Here. So that's how the iota branches from the below, okay, in the duodenum. That's how it branches. So now we have to displace our heart in order to see the blood vessels up. Before we displace our heart, when it is, it's in its normal position, we are seeing this big middle thing here, like a main blood vessel, as in, but it's like inside. And this is called trachus arteriosus, this big blood vessel here in the middle. So before we displace it, that's when we can see it. And before we displace it, we are able to see it, the trachus arteriosus dividing into two. And these two branches, which it divides into, will also divide into two, three. One, two, and then the third one. And these ones are called arterial arteries. Mm. So the other ones are carotid, then um, systematic, something like that. And then cutaneous. And then cutaneous arteries. So when they divide, that's when one, the systematic, will go down and join the iota. Okay, the iota that is coming from this side to supply to the alimentary uh, canal. So when we displace the heart upward, that's when we'll be able to see the auricles, the ventricles properly, the ventricles and then the auricles. Mm. And when we displace it upwards, then we are going to see the venous system. This time it was the arterial system when it's still downwards, mm. posterior. Mm. So when we displace it upwards, we are able to see the venous system, the veins, When we displace it upward, we have ma one main blood vessel down here. This is the vena cover. But the one that goes down, it's the vena cover is here. So the one that goes down is called the posterior vena cover. Mm -hmm. And then these two that branch upwards are called the anterior vena cover. So when the anterior vena cover branches upwards, it will form three other branches. And these three other branches, one is subclavian vein, the other one is innominate vein, and the other one is external jugular vein. Mm -hmm. So when it divides into external jugular and yeah, those three main blood vessels will also divide into two. Each will divide into two. So the subclavian artery, this subclavian artery is going to divide into masiculocutaneous vein. You're seeing this vein, this one that is coming to supply the skin. Yeah. This one here. This is the musculocutaneous vein. The subclavian vein divides into musculocutaneous vein and the brachial vein. Branchial vein, which is coming to the limbs, the upper limbs. So then the innominate vein, 
is going to divide into subscapular vein, which comes directly to the limbs, this, directly to the limbs, and then the external jugular, internal jugular, which is coming up like almost to the head and neck region. Mm -hmm. Then, when, you, when it's, you come and find this external jugular vein, and it's going to divide into mandibular vein coming to the head, this mandibular vein coming to the head, and then the lingo, mm -hmm. lingo vein to the head. So, so both the, the mandibular vein and the lingo vein go to the head. Yeah. So the same, whatever happens on the right of, or the left of the specimen takes place on the right of the specimen. So everything is the same, even for the arterial system. Mm -hmm. So after the posterior vena cover has divided downwards, when you're seeing your specimen, after it has divided downwards, mm -hmm. it will move and then have some branches immediately. It has moved down. Immediately you, you see your lungs, it has moved down, it divides into two, and it forms this, which is pulmonary vein, going to the lungs and taking blood to the, car, current blood from the lungs back to the heart. Yeah. And here, also the same on the left side. Then when it reaches down, this same arterial, uh, posterior vena cover will divide into these two kidneys that are here. These two kidneys to form renal vein, as in four, four for each kidney. Mm -hmm. Renal veins. But on top here, it will also supply ovarian veins to the ovaries, mm -hmm. to the, the ovaries, then move down. But before, when we dissected this, this anterior, the anterior abdominal vein that we ligatured so that it could not like bleed and we don't see the blood vessels, something like that, divides into two when it reaches down here. The anterior abdominal vein, this anterior abdominal vein we are seeing here, here. This one, it divides into two to form pelvic veins. And then the pelvic veins will move to the thighs. Like, now if you are to dissect this one. The pelvic vein move to the thighs. And, So here we move and we have through our thigh we can see the blood vessels. So the pelvic vein comes from here and joins with another vein in the, in the thigh. And this, this vein it joins with will be called the femoral vein. Then there is another vein here, sciatic vein inside the thighs. So the sciatic veins are inside. The the, the thighs, mm. sciatic vein, sciatic vein, they are inside. Then the femoral veins are the ones that connect with the pelvic vein from the anterior abdominal vein. The two that came from the anterior abdominal vein, they form the pelvic vein. So when we want to dissect the buccal cavity, like its uh, mm -hmm. mouth and what, <laughs> we, want, we, we want to dissect and display what is inside. But this buccal cavity has both the lower flow, okay, the flow and the roof. This flow, okay, the roof, the flow is mainly the tongue, this elastic, um, long tongue, and it's almost to the surface here, yeah? so that it can easily like stretch and get the food which is in long distances or even yeah, and it's really sticky so that it can get the food, trap the food and it sticks on, onto it. Mm -hmm. Then the floor also has some blood vessels down here. But mainly these blood vessels are for gaseous exchange because usually it uses its buccal cavity for exchanging these blood vessels down here. 
Tuesday is it's back cavity for gaseous exchange. Then when we go to the roof, the roof has the main, main features we really, really need in the, the dissection. The roof has a, like these two holes, which are almost at the lower surface. These two holes are openings to the eustachian tube. The out, uh, for it, it doesn't have external ears. It has eustachian tubes outside. So these are the openings to the eustachian tube. Then when you see these, these two big, almost dark, are the eye orbitals, like eye os sockets. Yeah? Then here, these two holes immediately after are like openings to the nostrils. Here. Then this lining inside, the, the toad and frogs really don't have teeth. Yeah? But this lining in, inside shows you the existence of the maxillary teeth. The ones they use like those small, yeah? the ones they used to feed. Mm -hmm. Then when we reach up here, we have uh, the internal nares up here. I don't know what that is for, but it has an internal nares up. Mm -hmm. And then, then down here, almost to, close to the eye orbital, it has uh, vomerian teeth up. So the vomerian teeth immediately after the orbital, then the internal nares, and then the existence of the maxillary teeth. So that's mainly the buccal cavity. Now we are going to look at the external features. And these external features have like adaptive advantages. And then, as we have seen, the frog otter has a wide gap, that's like a wide opening mm -hmm. of the mouth, yeah, which is basically used to, co to consume large prey, yeah, prey of big size. And then it has hollow nostrils, and those are basically for breathing. Yeah, here they are the opening to the nariz, and those are the nostrils, basically for breathing. And then uh, it also has a triangular shape. So if we had to put it, Posterior part upwards, we would see the triangular shape of the head, but even now it's kind of seen. Yeah, and the triangular shape of the head enables it to swim easily or to burrow yeah, in the ground or in the water. And then it has um, large protruding eyes. Yeah, maybe if I do this, we can see them. They are really protruding and therefore. A wide, a wide field of view, yes, so that it can see many things at once. And then it has large external eardrums, yes, such that it can trap maximum sound waves. And then it also has two large major poison glands and many minor poison glands, and those are basically for defense and protection. Yeah, these are the two major poisonous glands. Yeah. This, this one and this one, yeah, which are mainly for defense. So in terms of danger, it can produce, they can produce poison, they secret poison, yeah, in order to defend themselves. And then the frog has a thin skin with large surface area, as you can see. That seems, yeah, it normally, its gaseous section takes place across the skin. Eh? Yeah, it's not like us who, who have only lungs. And then it has long hind limbs. Yeah, the, the hind limbs are longer than the forward limbs. And this is for facilitating forward propulsion. Yeah, so that it can easily jump. jump. Yeah, and then it also has webbed feet. Yeah, as we can see, its feet are webbed. Yeah, only on the yeah. hind limbs. On the hind limbs, actually. The four limbs are not web. Yeah, and the webbed feet are for swimming. Yeah, since it mainly lives in water. 